Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Ivan Svetnikov. Actually, let me show myself. Um, I am presenting this uh, Friday forecasting talks for you. I'm a member of Center for Marketing Analytics and Forecasting. And uh, this is the third event that we organize in the series of webinars. Uh, the idea is to have six this year and then continue the next year with another six and maybe even more. Um, today's seminar will be delivered by Mike Thomas from Tangent Works. It's on the topic of resilient forecasting with instant ML. So this will be machine learning uh, related topic and I think it should be quite interesting. Um, but I want to say a couple of words about the center before we start. So on this slide, you can see all the members uh, of the center that we have at the moment and a short information about the services we have, the expertise we have, what we do. And so our area of research is more focused on uh, forecasting in practice. So for example, demand uh, forecasting, demand planning, uh, a little bit on marketing analytics and also expert, we have expertise in supply chain forecasting and machine learning. Uh, so if you're interested in our events, here is the slide with some links. We have a beautiful landing page created by the members of the CMOF. This is the first uh, address over there. We have our YouTube channel, which contains two videos at the moment from the previous webinars. And if you want to get in touch with us, we have website, Twitter, LinkedIn and other means to getting in touch with us. So if you're interested in uh, collaborating with us, working with us, then please don't hesitate and uh, get in touch. So how does this event work? And just a couple of brief words. Mike will present uh, and uh, um, this will take approximately half an hour. We will collect questions in the Q&A area. So you should have an icon in the top right corner of your screen. You, if you click, you can type the question and uh, our members of staff will approve those questions and Mike will see them at the end of the presentation. And at the end of the presentation, he will answer all those questions. Finally, this is uh, the event that will be recorded. So um, if you attend this event, we assume that you are OK with that. And this recording will be then available on our YouTube channel. And we will also make uh, slides of Mike available online. I think that this is everything I wanted to say. So uh, I, I think Mike can start. Can you please share your presentation? Well, thank you very much and uh, my apologies for the technical hitches. Um, but uh, my name is Mike Thomas and I'm from Tangent Works. Uh, I'd like to thank Ivan and the Centre for Marketing Analytics and Forecasting for inviting me to speak as part of this uh, series of Friday forecasting talks. The um, two previous talks on this series have been very interesting. So if you've not managed to review them, uh, to view them yet uh, online, I recommend you go back and take a look. Um, today's talk, I will be focusing on forecasting with machine learning um, and um, how that can be made more resilient with the Tangent Works Instant ML software. So we'll start with a quick introduction of the Tangent Works business uh, before moving on to discuss typical challenges of using machine learning uh, models for time series data. We will look at how automation helps the, to address these challenges and what characteristics we believe machine learning software should have for forecasters to get the most value from their data. Finally, we will take a look at the case from earlier this year with SwissGrid um, and uh, then move on to a summary. So um, TangentWorks uh, was established in 2013 by specialists in information geometry and information criteria. Uh, we saw that they saw that machine learning models building was labor intensive and repetitive. So they automated the process with a model building engine and named the Tangent Information Modeler or TIM for short. So um, this is a um, type of uh, scene that, uh, that I imagine happened. I'm sure they were um, dressed slightly differently that day. 
But um, from our Belgian Slovak roots, the um, uh, we've now we're growing with offices in the UK and the US. Our UK office is based here in the Northwest, um, and uh, and this is our, our mission. So uh, so this is our, our mission statement. We want to make our solutions accessible for all. Focus on value creation and the needs of our users. This mission is central to the continued development of Tim and sets the tone for this presentation, which will focus on some simple but fundamental concepts that are central to successful forecasting strategies. The title of this presentation is focused on resilience and to improve resilience, we must first acknowledge why machine learning models are fragile when applied to time series problems. It may seem obvious, but fragility comes from change. In this, it changes in the source data. Uh, these might be structural changes. Uh, they, they can be significant structural changes such as COVID or minor changes um, that are maybe more frequent, but have fewer consequences. This can also be changes in data availability. Uh, this can result in models becoming completely useless if features within the model rely on data point that is no longer available. Because of the nature of these changes, they often only come to light at the point of forecast, or in the case of structural changes, after the point of forecast. This can lead to frantic rebuild of models, the use of suboptimal models, or a period where no forecast can be produced at all. We can see this in a typical forecasting scenario. There is a variable that we want to predict. In this case, it's sales. A number of predictor candidates um, are available, such as weather. The data scientists build, build a model and then turns this, in turn uses this for forecast generation. This model can sometimes be used to, for, can sometimes be used to successfully build forecasts for extended periods without issue until one day something changes and whatever the cause of that change a data scientist time is engaged in correcting the model before the forecast can be generated once more we shouldn't forget most of the business value comes from the forecast quality and the information for that forecast is held within the source data so modifying the model in response to changes in the source data is is just required to stand still, not improve the forecast. In in fact, any time spent building a, a rebuilding model takes time away from possible improvements to the system. And in fact, it is a um, consideration that um, yeah that that, that pe people feel that they're improving the system when actually they they go back to. Uh, uh, in, in fact, this quotation from two and a half thousand years ago is still as relevant today as it was then. It is an illusion to feel that we are in a stable environment and we should therefore plan for change. This is where Instant ML comes in. Instant ML builds accurate machine learning models in a single pass of the data without any pre-tuning of the engine. And so model building can be initiated without human interaction. To be clear, this is not a model library. This is an automated method of creating the model from the ground up. In turn, this enables orchestrated model build and rebuild, allowing the data scientists to spend more time bringing in additional data sources to experiment and improve the forecast. In this case, we have brought some uh, extra event data on board and uh, that will have improved the forecast. So it's about focusing on, um, on, on this, the information that's in that source data. This enables creation of models just in time at the point of forecast. And in turn, this has led to the creation of the TangentWorks real-time instant ML solution, where the model and the forecast are created in a single API request that takes seconds to complete. Needless to say, orchestrated model building enables users to deploy significantly more complex multi-model systems, either for hierarchical forecasting strategies such as this one, or simply to improve the level of granularity in the analysis possible. When considering such multi-model systems, it can be seen that the system itself is more robust as there is no single point of failure. 
and structural changes can be isolated and addressed quickly. This system in, is in retail, but it, this is just as relevant for utility networks and the user can design the system as they see appropriate. So how does automation benefit forecasting in an organization? First, we can look at the forecast itself. When you are frequently rebuilding models using the latest data, the model used will evolve and reflect the changes as, the, as that data it develops. Likewise, rapid model building ensures a forecast is always available even when data availability changes. And you can do more with strategies that are not limited by engineering resources. And when building complex systems, automation ensures that they can be scaled with no increase in headcount or loss of stability. It allows experiments to be put into production with ease and it allows data scientists to focus on the performance of the optimization of the overall system rather than individual models. Finally, automation provides resilience to the whole organization. Personnel can focus on strategic goals. It has the effect of democratizing data analytics across the organization with code-free forecasting and ensures best practice can be adopted by all. So in our view, the optimum machine learning model building software has the following characteristics. It must be quick, both to build and deploy models. It should, of course, be accurate. The process should be entirely automated to minimize maintenance. Uh, the solution should be flexible, both in terms of compatibility and with the data platforms and availability of deployment options. And finally, the models should be human readable to enable the user to interrogate models better, understanding the, the data and explain why decisions are being made. Not only have teams using TIM been winners of various global competitions, but TIM has been benchmarked by our partners such as Alteryx and Microsoft using their ARIMA and AutoML solutions respectively. In terms of both speed and accuracy, TIM was found to be markedly superior and this has formed, informed their decision making when selecting Tangent Works as best in breed partner. As discussed earlier in the presentation, automation does not just bring speed, but it allows models to be built when required without engineering supervision. This is a differentiator from auto ML solutions, which require an engineer to guide the process. The Tangent Works approach is to be agnostic to technology, platforms, and to support our customers alongside their existing systems where possible. I have mentioned two of our partners already, and the list is growing. Tim can be accessed directly through our API or Tim Studio environment, so there really is something for, for, for everyone, from Excel users through to Python coders. Tim is efficient and requires relatively little computing power, so flexibility comes from deployment options that are available with edge devices and air gap networks supported alongside cloud solutions. Finally, users need models to be readable. Models that are generated from TIM can be read and interrogated to capture the necessary insights and inform decision-making. On this slide, we show the importance of certain features on a tree map, but other options are available depending on the, our, our customers' needs, and we give them full access to, uh, to the models. So now for uh, an overview of uh, what this looks like in practice. Earlier this year, Swiss Grid, sorry, Swiss Grid ran a real-time benchmarking exercise between their incumbent supplier and various other challenges. There were multiple intraday forecasts made and this plot provides the cumulative deviation over the three month period. In this exercise, Tim was used in real-time instant ML mode so the model was rebuilt at every forecast point using the most recent data. As can be seen on the mustard color line, Tim provided a consistent forecast that outperformed the rest of the competitors over the three month period. When we look at the daily values, it can be seen that the most valuable approach does not necessarily provide the best performing solution for every day. 
but instead provides consistently reliable forecasts over the entire period. The outcome it was a reduction in cumulative error over the three months by almost a third. So in summary, machine learning models are fragile to change. And as change will always happen, we need to find a way to plan for this. So instant ML is not just an incremental improvement over auto ML, it enables orchestration without losing the readability of the models. When new technologies become available, it opens up new doors. Don't restrict what is possible by what's done, uh, what is possible in the future by what's done in the past. We certainly recommend um, trying TIM and um, and that's where the exciting work is being done at the moment. It's by our customers and they're pushing the envelope of what is possible and what is being done. So I would like to invite you all to try Tim. Um, please email me and, um, and we can set you up with a guided trial. Um, but please include in the subject heading um, SEMA free trial and um, we, will, um, we, we, we will take you up on that. So uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to um, to raise them. I know I've I've come in under the half hour, Ivan. So um, so we've got longer for, for questions. Maybe I uh, I accelerated to uh, um, to overcome the delay at the end. But uh, but please, any questions? So is this a pure ML or do you use statistical models as well? Um, there are several parts to the algorithm that stem from both classical statistical models and machine learning models. However, as I mentioned in the presentation, um, TIM is a single modeling strategy, not a collection of different models, and um, it doesn't pose any statistical assumptions on the data. So the next question is, um, how do you explain the machine learning methods to practitioners? I found it difficult to explain ARIMA. Machine learning is typically even more complicated. Um, this is probably the best part of TIM in the fact that even though the core algorithm might be complicated, the resulting model is a simple linear regression that uses original predictors and their transformations. Uh, linear models are, are very simple and the transformations are usually quite intuitive. So, for example, periodic waves that have a frequency uh, daily or uh, weekly, hourly, minutely, whatever. Um, and uh, for indicators as to whether or not, uh, for instance, it was Friday two hours ago. So how does TIM assess and present forecast uncertainty? Forecasts from TIM come together with prediction intervals. So. Um, you might know these under the name of confidence intervals, but since Tim doesn't pose any statistical assumptions on the data and distribution of error, the term prediction intervals is mathematically correct. So the question here is, I would be very interested in finding out how decisions are made to re-estimate models using recent data, how recent and relevant data are being determined for each model, is there an interaction between the decision and the type of forecasting slash machine learning model being estimated? So Tim is very sensitive to, to new data points. Um, the model on, as a whole is robust, meaning that the, uh, by changing an observation slightly, the forecast produced by this model won't change much either. Uh, but the structure of the model itself is loose and might change even with one new observation. So if the model, uh, if model A uses temperature T minus 12 and rain of T minus 2, for instance, retraining it with one or more observations might change the structure to use temperature T minus 11 and rain at T minus 1 instead. Regarding the relevant importance of factors, how is it exactly computed? Are those model parameters? Or is any other interpretability algorithm used? There is no additional algorithm used. The importance are assembled using partial variance that when included in the model, 
the predictor explains from the target. So there's a question here about, um, about use cases and um, areas of application. So who are your main customers? Or, or rather, what industries typically employ your software? Do these companies normally have analytical forecasting methods systems in place, or do, do you normally replace human planners? So Tim is industry agnostic. We have rollouts in energy, retail, manufacturing, and uh, a wide variety of use cases. So Tim usually doesn't replace human planners. Uh, we look to enhance their capabilities um, and the scale on which they can operate, basically. Um, typically, companies either have static models already in place, um, and they're looking for a dynamic solution that would provide a higher accuracy, speed, or flexibility. Or um, they have data scientists that have a lot of various tasks, um, and Tim basically serves them to make their life easier and more scalable to transfer across their business. Is Tim benchmarked against practice machine learning methods? So Tim is developed in a way that where we gather and use a lot of data sets across different industries and constantly benchmark the algorithm against latest time series solutions or algorithms. Um, the examples I gave uh, in, in the presentation were just, just a couple against ARIMA and against AutoML, but, um, but we're, we're, we're doing that all the time. Do you compare the forecast of your algorithm to a naive benchmark? So, no, th this is not an explicit part of our model building process. Um, Tim relies on information criteria to make sure that it doesn't overfit the data. So Tim typically outperforms naive benchmarks. Um, the, the more complex the data set, then the bigger the difference. OK, question. When a data input changes, obviously some notification to the end user needs to take place. And then a decision on whether the change is temporary or permanent needs to be made before the, a decision to alter the model is made. How does your solution help this situation other than just to speed up and recalculate the model? So Tim returns warnings um, about suspicious input data changes um, compared to what was observed in the past. In addition, as part of our MLOps functionalities, the accuracy drifts are also monitored and users are alerted if there is a drift in accuracy. How much data do you need for your methods to perform well? I mean, the initial time series length, right? So this question is difficult to answer. Um, with time series, it's normally too much data that causes the problems rather than too little. Um, however, it's um, it's also the case that Tim can only work with what it's got. So where there are very few data points, Tim will build quite a simple model. Um, and where this builds up over time, um, then then we can increase it, it, Tim increases the complexity. Um, what I would say is that over the um, where you've got seasonality in your data, you need to capture at least one or two seasons within that to uh, to be able to um, or cycles within the seasons. Uh, to be able to really capture the um, uh, the patterns w within that, but um, but not too long. So if you're if you're talking about annual uh, data that's uh, that's got seasonality, then you you typically have two two to three years worth of data. Returning to previous question, how are structural changes detected? So yeah, there are, there are several checks, um, and these are. Um, based on the changes in the moving variance and the, the mean of the signal. OK. Well, thanks for responding to all the questions. I think that was a, a good discussion, which gave us quite, quite a good understanding of uh, what's happening. Um, right, I think that we can close the session. Um, plus, I have a lecture to, <laughs> to deliver in 15 minutes. Uh, thanks very much, Mike, for participating. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. And uh, we will continue our webinars with the talk in the, the two weeks' time. We will um, release the video and the slides uh, on Monday. And on Monday, we will also announce what will come next, uh, next Friday. So thanks for participating. Thank you, Mike.
And uh, all of you have a nice day. Thank you very much.